Hello, my name is Colleen Hughes. I am the Executive Director of the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission. And I'm Dr. Mark Fuller, the CEO of Value Behavioral Health. In an effort to combat the alarming drug epidemic in Westmoreland County, we have collaborated with Westmoreland County Behavioral Health and Developmental Services and Southwest Behavioral Health Management to develop an educational video series designed to increase awareness and educate community members. Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Fuller, the CEO of Value Behavioral Health. I'd like to talk to you about some of the signs and symptoms of substance abuse. This is a very important health concern and many people are wondering how would they know if a family member or a loved one was having a substance abuse problem. Substance abuse is one of our nation's leading health problems. Alcohol and other drugs touch one in four families. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, over 23 million people needed treatment for drug and alcohol abuse in one recent year. However, of those 23 million, only one in 10 actually received treatment. So what about the rest of the individuals? How can we help friends and family who might have substance abuse problems? Well, the first step is to recognize the signs and symptoms of substance abuse. Okay. So when I talk about substance abuse, I'm also talking about alcohol abuse as well. So we'll be talking about all of those problems together in one category. So what are some important signs and symptoms that would lead you to be concerned about a family member or a loved one? So there's a couple of general ones I wanna talk about first. And these include the individual giving up important social, occupational, or recreational activities. So this is someone that used to come around all the time or was very involved in a particular organization and now would rather drink than go to the organization. In addition, they could have work-related problems. They're too hungover in the morning to go to work, or they've been using substances and are unable to get to work. So seeing problems in these areas are one sign that an individual might be having problems. Another important sign is the use of substances in what are hazardous or dangerous situations. The most common is drinking and driving. People that continue to drink and drive over and over are at great risk for substance abuse. And in fact, being arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol increases your chances of actually having alcoholism. Uh, one DUI is about 25%, and people that experience two DUIs have alcoholism about 50% of the time. So these are very concerning signs and symptoms. Now, people that are having physical health problems or psychological problems related to the substance and yet continue to use the substance also are indicating that they may have an abuse problem. So an example of this is a person with a health problem due to excessive drinking. It could be a liver problem, pancreas, or a variety of other things. Their doctors warn them about the hazards of drinking on their particular medical problem and yet the person drinks anyway. It could be a person that's been experiencing depression uh, related to substance abuse. And there are a number of substances that can lead to depression, and yet they continue to use it anyway. So generally, when a person finds something that's harmful to themselves, they stop it. But people that continue to use those substances, despite these clear physical or psychological warnings, are at risk to have substance abuse. Another indication is what we call tolerance. And what that means is the individual needs more of the drug to get high or to relieve anxiety or to do whatever it is they're looking for. Now, this could be someone that used to drink two beers on Friday night and now finds two six packs or more to their liking. It could be someone that started out taking a pain pill once a day and now it's taking it four times a day without their doctor's direction. So the experience of a person needing more of the drug to get that high and to get that feeling is another warning sign. Another category we see is withdrawal. Now withdrawal means when a person stops taking the drug abruptly. This could be because they ran out of it, it could be because they became ill and were hospitalized, it could be a variety of reasons. If a person 
has to stop a drug on an unexpected basis and stops it completely and then begins experiencing withdrawal symptoms associated with it, that's another sign of substance abuse. Another area that gives us pause and makes us concerned about people are using larger amounts of a substance than they intended to or using it for a longer time than they intended. So what I mean by that? Well, that would be the person that's going out for just one drink and then six hours later and 10 drinks later finally comes home. Not because they intended to, but because they've lost control over their drinking. It could be someone that goes out to use drugs on a Friday night and you don't see them till Monday. Whereas their intention was just to go get high on Friday night and come back and it ends up being a lost weekend. Those larger amounts and taking medications or drugs over a longer period of time than intended are warning signs. It's an indication that the individual is losing control over their substance use. Another sign is persistent desire or unsuccessful attempts to cut down or control use. So people that are developing alcoholism or substance uh, dependence kind of know that it's getting out of control along the way and will often try and get it back into control. So they'll only drink uh, after five o'clock or only on weekends, or they're only gonna take two pills, or they're only gonna take one now, or they're not gonna use um, Oxycontin anymore, whatever the medication is, and yet you see them a couple days later or a week later, and they're back using the drug or alcohol in the same way they were using before. So these persistent attempts that are unsuccessful are another warning sign that the person's becoming dependent on the substance and is losing control over its use. The next category is the individual becoming kind of obsessed with the drug. That is requiring a great deal of time obtaining the drug, using the drug, or recovering from its effects. So a person that begins to give up their regular activities, time with family, time with friends, things they would normally do that they like, person that's giving that up and now spending most of the day uh, using the drug, recovering from the use of the drug, or uh, trying to get money to buy the drug, the more sort of obsessed and the more time the person spends on the drug, the more likely they are to have a substance abuse problem. We also use the word uh, craving, and this is a sign that is that the person thinks about the drug a lot and wants to take the drug a lot. Generally, most people have lots of stuff on their mind. They have, you know, roles at home, they have things to do at school, so there's lots of things that they're thinking about. Uh, for a person that's developing drug addiction or alcoholism, thinking about that drug and thinking about using that begins to take up a bigger and bigger part of their activity and of their uh, thoughts. People also begin to stop doing the things that they're supposed to do. So that for a student that could be homework uh, does, isn't done, grades start to fall. For someone at work, they're not producing as well, they're having missed days, they're showing up late a lot, their performance isn't as good. And for someone at home, perhaps the laundry doesn't get done anymore, the floors don't get swept, there's not food in the refrigerator. These major roles that a person normally is very committed to stop being fulfilled because the individual is more obsessed and spends more time with the drug than they are on their regular life roles. Another sign of substance abuse is a person that's having problems with their friends and a person that's having problems with their relationship with individuals. So what do I mean by that? Well, this could be someone that's been a long-standing member of a club or an organization that suddenly begins having arguments or fights or difficulties that weren't there before. This could be things like um, problems with your spouse where formerly you got along great, now you find yourself arguing more, getting into more um, fights, uh, even domestic violence. Uh, a lot of these things can be signs and symptoms of substance abuse, but the thing that's most important about this is a change. You had someone that was getting along well with their friends and with their family, and now they're not. And the main difference is they're using more and more of a substance, and that seems to be the cause of that. So that's another thing to look for, is a change in their relationships with other people. 
So next, let's look at some very specific signs of substance abuse in adults. And these are some common things that you can see. There are other potential causes for these, so they're not specific to substance abuse, but taken together, they can create a picture that should give a friend or family member pause and make them concerned that substance abuse might be part of the picture. So for adults, things we look at are poor work performance. So work, no matter what you do, can be a very challenging problem or series of problems. And solving those problems and getting through the day takes concentration, effort, creativity, no matter what you're doing. Alcohol and other drugs impair that. They make it harder to get through the work day. You may be showing up late, you might be leaving early, you may have more absences than usual, your work is of a different quality than it used to be, you're missing deadlines. Those kinds of things can be a result of substance abuse. I mentioned frequent absenteeism, so missing work. So this may be someone that was always very prompt and, and was always at work, and now all of a sudden Mondays they really don't make it in till late. And uh, perhaps other days of the week they're calling off work unexpectedly, um, more problems uh, being there because of their substance use and because of the withdrawal and the consequence of their substance abuse. Another category is what we call unusual behaviors. So these would be doing things that a person would not normally do. Alcohol and drugs can affect the brain in such a way that people do very, very unusual things when they're under the influence of them. So these would be behaviors you would not expect. They might be engaged in criminal activity. They might just be doing things that would not normally occur to them. They'd be sleeping uh, on the side of the road, um, not being able to find their way home. Um, getting in uh, arguments with very close friends over nothing. So the change in behaviors, these unusual behaviors that make you say, why would that person do that, uh, often are related to uh, alcohol and drug use. Another category is slurred speech. Uh, we're all familiar with the concept of alcohol impairing your ability to speak. And we notice that folks that are drinking on a regular basis also can develop slurred speech from that. Isolation, this is kind of an interesting one because we don't often think about it, but folks that are starting to get into later stages of abuse and dependence often are embarrassed by their use and they know that it's not correct and it's not proper. And they are worried about criticism of their substance use. So they will begin to isolate themselves more and more. They'll, they'll not come to after work activities. They'll skip family reunions. Someone that was formerly uh, involved in a variety of activities, they find themselves more and more wanting to be alone with their substance. Financial problems are also common, it's especially a problem with drugs. Uh, drugs require a fair amount of money, particularly as the dependence grows and the need for drugs grow. People can get into financial problems very, very quickly. And so people that are stealing, that never stole anything before, people that are emptying their bank account and saving, selling prized objects, all of these can be signs of substance abuse. Unexplained physical health problems. A person previously healthy now having stomach problems or liver problems or other difficulties. Uh, alcohol and other drugs can be poisonous to all parts of the body. And so a variety of medical conditions can result. So if someone that was previously healthy is now having to see the doctor a lot and is also had an increase in their substance use, this should be another warning sign. I mentioned earlier arrests for driving under the influence of alcohol and car accidents. Alcohol and other drugs impair our ability to do complex tasks, and driving is a very complex task. Uh, assessing the road, steering, uh, braking, accelerating at the right time, stopping at the right time, all of these require that your mind be sharp and your body be fit and that they're working in concert together. Alcohol and drugs impair this concentration and this uh, coordination of your mind and your body and can result in arrests for driving under the influence of alcohol, but also for car accidents. This is one of the leading causes of car ac accidents, in fact. And then the last category is marital problems and domestic violence. Alcohol and drugs 
often underlie domestic violence and are very, very commonly seen in these cases. They also can result in uh, fights, uh, not just physical fights, but verbal arguments, disagreements, um, escalating substance abuse often leads to escalating marital problems. So a specific category of signs and symptoms of substance abuse I'd like to talk about are in teenagers and young adults because alcohol and drug abuse in teenagers can look different than adults. So one of the signs of alcohol and drug abuse in teenagers is unusual hostility, irritability, or secretiveness. Now some of you may be saying, I think my teenager is irritable all the time. And uh, teenagers can be irritable. But look for these changes. So someone that previously was doing very well now is argumentative, irritable, and the secretiveness is a big part of this. Teens know they're not supposed to be using alcohol and drugs. They know it's wrong. And so they want to hide that from their parents and, their, and many of their friends. So the secretiveness is also a tip-off that alcohol and drug abuse may be going on. Withdrawal from the family. A teen that formerly was involved in all that you did. Family reunions, outings, Friday night movie, uh, Sunday afternoon dinner, whatever the experience is that the family has, the teen that previously was involved in that and now distanced themselves is a person that you should be concerned about. Alcohol and drugs, again, uh, can cause changes in the way a person thinks about themselves and relates to others, and withdrawing from their family is a very concerning sign. Watch for a change in friends. And it's not that teens don't drift from group to group from time to time or change their friends, but if their friends formerly were more of a kind of typical child for your neighborhood and all of a sudden they're in with a very different crowd, crowd that gives you concern and worry, be concerned that part of that change might be related to substances. Because there are kids that will not use substances and will not tolerate it in their friends. So if a teen is beginning to use substances, they may have to leave their current peer group and move to one that's also using drugs and alcohol. So a change in your child's peer group should also be a, a cause for concern, particularly if it's a negative change. Resistance to discipline. Now again, I know what a lot of parents are thinking, aren't all teenagers resistant to discipline? And they are to a degree. This is part of their separating and growing up. But look for uh, unexpected resistance and more resistance than you used to have. So the change really is the thing that I want to call your attention to. Like I said, all teens can be a little rebellious, but if you're getting a lot of that and a lot of resistance to discipline, again, alcohol and drugs can be one of the underlying causes of that. A pattern of dishonesty, stealing and trouble with the police, buying drugs is illegal. People that sell drugs are committing crimes. So if your teen is involved in drugs, they're involved in illegal activity. Now, drugs are also expensive, so they're going to have to get money some way. Stealing uh, from you or from family, friends, from stores, other places, this is one of the way teens can support a drug habit. So if your teen is lying to you and is having trouble with the police and there's been episodes of stealing or suspected stealing, drugs and alcohol should be way up on your list of concerns. Be cautious about the teenager that suddenly has large amounts of cash. Uh, most teenagers have no cash or small amounts. If uh, your son or daughter suddenly has a large quantity, drugs is a cash trait. Uh, there's no other way to buy them or sell them. And so watch for a teen suddenly having uh, large amounts of cash on them. A drop in grades is another concern. And it's not that teenagers can't have their grades go up and down, but one of the things alcohol and drugs will do is impair their ability to be a good student. And so one of the first things you see when teens begin using drugs or alcohol regularly is their grades, grades fall off because it's difficult to get good grades. It's difficult to concentrate and to study and do those things. So if you see the grades going down, be concerned that alcohol or drugs might be part of that. A sudden increase in absences or tardiness. A student that's late for school a lot that was never late for school or leaves for school but doesn't make it. You get a call during the day, they're not there. It's not an excuse to absences. Be concerned and, and at least have some awareness that some of the reason for skipping school might be the use of alcohol and drugs. 
poor concentration and short-term memory. Alcohol and drugs also impact the brain and not remembering things, not being able to concentrate on things can be a side effect. Slurred speech, as we spoke about with adults, this can be the same in teenagers. So teenagers that can't speak right and are having difficulty with their speech, be concerned that they're impaired by the use of alcohol or drugs. We talked a little bit about stealing or a need for money, always needing advance in their allowance or increase in their allowance or things missing around the house. Uh, again, drugs are expensive and require a steady stream of cash. So be very, very uh, conscious if you notice that your teen is suddenly burning through a lot of cash. Drugs and alcohol can result in a loss of motivation and interest in regular activities. If your teen was formerly an avid baseball player and now doesn't play baseball, or they were very interested in another activity or a club, and now all of a sudden that's lost all interest for them, be concerned that something else like drugs or alcohol may be absorbing their time and attention now. Be concerned about drug-related messages, symbols, or paraphernalia. So if you're finding uh, unusual things related to marijuana or other drugs around the house, be concerned that it's more than just a t-shirt or a sign. Kids that are using alcohol and drugs begin to lose their concern for their appearance and uh, regular hygiene. So if your child was always very careful about uh, either hair or makeup or clothes and suddenly seems not to be concerned about those things, it may be because they're more concerned about drugs and alcohol. A few other things that go along with uh, their child's physical condition include bloodshot eyes, uh, either really big pupils or really small pupils, constant runny nose or cough, and a major change in eating or sleeping habits, coupled with a sudden weight loss or a lack of energy. A variety of things can cause these, but one of the things that a parent needs to be concerned about is, are alcohol and drugs leading to this? This concludes our talk today about the signs and symptoms of substance abuse. If you've seen or heard something here today that concerns you about a friend or loved one, please take action. You can get additional information and seek assistance at your single county authority or by calling your drug and alcohol case management unit. Thank you.